What's up everybody? Welcome to Make It Custom. I've got a good video for you today on hammer and dolly work. We've got this 1940 Willie's hood here. It got smashed by a tree that came down in somebody's yard. It was almost a throwaway piece for the guy. So um, I've got it here. I think I can fix it. I'm going to show you how I can get uh, a lot of that shape back really, really fast. And then some of the finer points of hammer and dolly work to try and get it smoothed right out. There is going to be a little bit of shrinking that has to happen once we've got the shape back. The reason being is that whenever something really hits and damages sheet metal, it crumples it. These crumple zones that you can see, any of these tight crinkles, anything that is like this where it's a sharp, you know, dent, and these are the spots that, that have stretched out. When I'm banging this back, this area didn't, didn't shrink or stretch so much. It's always these areas that got affected. So as we pop this dent out, these are the areas we'll have to shrink back down once we've smoothed it all out. So uh, I'm just gonna get to it and you guys can sort of follow along getting some of the major dings out of it and then we'll bring the hammer and dolly in and start trying to get everything smoothed back out and looking like a hood again. So let's go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get caught on the hood here. That's the first thing I did. <laughs> I'm just gonna put my heavy sandbag right in the middle there, give it some weight, and then I'm gonna start with a soft hammer banging most of this dent out. Just trying to get it closer to the shape we want. reason I'm using a soft hammer, I like it because it's it's not gonna leave like a hammer mark and add extra crinkles. It's gonna conform a little bit to the spots that I'm hitting so that you're not transferring the hammer mark into it as we're trying to get these wrinkles out. I don't wanna create a bunch more. So even if you look right here, we've got a ton of it out already with 10 hits of the hammer. We've got uh, a lot of that shape back in, but we've made a few more crinkles as this tin foil is kind of unfolding. I'm gonna hit it a few more times and then we're gonna come in with a hammer and dolly and start trying to smooth some of this out. So when I'm, when I'm hammer and dollying, um, a lot of people think that you wanna find the shape of the metal with the dolly and hit right on it like you're trying to you're trying to make this shape in that piece of metal that's not how you do it and it's a common misconception i used to do this when i didn't know better when you're hitting on the dolly that's stretching the metal you're pinching the metal in between two hardened surfaces and you're stretching it every time you hit that metal and pinch it between two hard surfaces and hear the the ting that is actually stretching it so you don't want to hear that right now right now what we're trying to do is hammer on the crinkles and dolly off the crinkles. We're gonna kind of do this both ways. I'm just gonna show you since it's upside down right now. I'm gonna use sort of the uh, concave side of this and just hold it on the back side uh, lightly, you know, and then I'm just gonna tap all these crinkled areas back down. I got a few different hammers that I like to use and it's it's always important to have a variety. This one's kind of one of my favorites, but they all have different crowns on them. So in this area, we've got quite a bit of a radius. If I'm hammering on this side, I can use a flat hammer, but if I'm hammering from this side, I need a convex hammer. So this is what I'm using just to pop some of these out. Still got this big dent right there. Okay, I'm gonna flip the hood over now, work it from the other side. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and straighten some of this out while we're here. Let me see what I can do. It's 
kind of kind of holding it a little bit too high right now. One second here. Yep. I just moved this onto the uh, the stump here just for a second so I can get a better angle on this. Now, since this piece turned in, it's got this tipped flange here, and you can see it's made these wrinkles. It's trying to shrink itself so that it can turn in. So now, to try and bring this back out, we wanna add pressure this way on this, and we want to hammer these wrinkles back out to allow it to come back out. It's kind of a tough spot to be in, but... Nice, we're getting a lot of that out. Just gonna grab another clamp. Sometimes I wish I had three hands, or even four. That'd be fucking amazing. You can come have a look right here. This flange has a good bend in it. There's a big bend in there. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to get that bend out of it so that this piece is straight and I can clamp it to this piece temporarily while we're working the area. I'm gonna see what I can get out by hand, which is probably not a lot. Or maybe not at all. This thing's a lot stronger than I thought. Grab another clamp. I'm actually gonna move this back. Now this is a repair that we're gonna make later on, but for now this dent is holding us up. So we're gonna have to pop that out even though we're replacing it later. Probably enough. Yeah, look at that. Starting to look like something. Looks like we got a couple of holes we could potentially line up right there. Okay, now if you look at the front of this hood here, this piece looks like the hood kind of comes out like that. This piece obviously got flattened out and damaged when it ripped off of here. So we're gonna have to bend this piece back, fix that flange a little bit so that it, it can come back together here. This is just the preliminary first go around, you know, just to overall try and bring the, as much shape back as possible, try and line up where damage could have cracked or ripped apart. We'll try and get as much of the shape back as possible and then start fine tuning all these little dents and going over it. But uh, the initial, you know, dent removal, it can happen pretty quick. I mean, we got, we got quite a bit out already and we're gonna just keep going. Looks like it needs to come up a bit. 
Whenever I'm looking at a repair like this, it's also to kind of envision how it happened. You want to reverse what had happened. So if a tree came down on it a certain way, you want to start working it out the same way that it damaged it. You know, in this case, there's a lot of damage. So you just kind of want to get it all back out. But I see a lot of times some guys, they'll notice the wrong spot of the damage to try and undo. Like if you've got a big sink, like maybe something fell on the middle of a roof and it came down, you really shouldn't touch the center of that very much. All your work is going to be on the outside. And the reason being is that that's where the damage actually happened. That's where the shrink and the stretch affected the metal permanently and you have to reverse that to get it fully flat so of course you're going to undo the dent like we just did now but all the spots where the hard bends are is where the metal's truly affected the rest of it is going to for the most part try and hold its form the piece wants to be the piece it was you just gotta relieve the spots that the most tension is and that's all those crinkles and those bends So right inside here, some of this piece is broken off inside. You can see that this piece used to flange underneath here and it was probably spot welded. So this is ripped off. It used to be that piece right there, but it's ripped off now. So there it is. You can still see it inside there. We've got to try and uncrinkle all that stuff so that we can get the shape back in it. So I'll fold it in on itself here. A lot of this, like I say, will probably be replaced, but we do have to get it all out just to uh, continue removing the dents. Ooh, there we go. I'm gonna try and line some of this stuff up a little bit better here, shifting it. I'm hitting it right in this corner and that's what's allowing it to move and line up. I'm, I'm using this part of the hammer and I'm hitting it right in the corner while it's clamped and that's allowing me to get some of that out of there. There's a little crinkle right here. i try and get uh, a little bit of that out. Now, something I'm doing with the vice grips right now is a little trick. This piece is a little bit further away than this piece. So to bring this piece in and this piece out, I'm going to clamp both pieces of the flange with the vice grips and give it a twist. So right down here on the flange, I'm grabbing it in between the two. I'm pulling it like that. It's helping me line it up right now. Now these pieces are lined up like that. I can give it a pull and we're getting there. There we go. That's looking better. So now we've got this, this flange line getting pretty close to being lined up. This is getting pretty close. It's looking a lot better than when it came in. That's for sure. Hasn't been that long yet. We do have a ways to go though. This vice grip out of the way. I'm going to try and get this little dent out here. You can probably see it pretty easily. There's a pretty good dent right there, and this will not line up unless I get that dent out. It's deformed this edge. This one looks nice. This one's got a banana going on. This right here is another one of my kind of my favorite tools. It's it's sort of the all around whatever you can use it for kind of thing. It gets into places some things don't. It's got a slight crown on it. It's just a leaf spring. It's a chunk of leaf spring that I bent and shaped into something that I use all the time. I line up doors with it. I, I'm gonna slap some of these dents with it too. So I'm gonna get it right up in there. In some situations, your hammers become the dollies too. It's all hardened steel. So I'm just gonna use this little end of the hammer up inside there to get, get real tight. I'm 
not gonna spend too long on that spot. We're gonna move on because we're just trying to make a quick video here. It's already getting on pretty long. I'm just gonna get this flange a little bit, pull up that flange a little bit, and then uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of smoothing out this main dent that we've got in the nose of this. Okay, there's a big dent right there. I'm gonna pull out the main chunk of the dent right now. When it's a big fat dent like that, where this line starts to curve, that's where I'm gonna put my dolly because this is where the bend happened. So I put my dolly on here and I'm gonna hammer there. And so that'll allow this to have ample room to come back out and it'll also facilitate this bend from coming out as well. See, where I put my dolly, that piece is now pretty much totally straight again. We've got a hard crease right there that's affected this bend, this tip in the sheet metal. So we're gonna start by getting this dent out of there, and then we'll start trying to fix this bend in the sheet metal. So once again, I'm gonna hammer directly on the back side of that crease. That's where my hammer's going, right there. And my dolly is gonna be anywhere around it where that bend has happened. So I'm gonna kind of just hover it on the outside here and make sure I don't hear the, the ting of the dolly. Okay, we popped, popped a bunch of that out. Just go a little bit, a little bit further with it. Start trying to get some of this back. Just gentle. Now I'm gonna choose this dolly to sit up against this edge so that I can hammer a little bit of this smooth. For that, I'm gonna use my little slapper. Okay, there's a good ding right there. We're gonna pop that out now. I'm gonna use the slightly concave side of this dolly. And I'm just gonna stop and tell you that there's no specific perfect dolly for anything. You wanna have a variety of dollies. I buy them everywhere. Some of them aren't even dollies. I've got different shapes of metal that I've just found that I know I can use when I'm, when I'm hammering. You know, collect as many dollies as you can. I get them from garage sales, swap meets, wherever. They're expensive to buy brand new and good quality ones last forever. So if you find them, get them and learn how to dress them as well. If you wanna do a really nice fine finish, you can do a nice polish on all your stuff and that polish will transfer. You know, that's a little bit more advanced than what we're doing today. So we're just gonna use what we've got here. got most of it out. That was a bit of a, uh, a hard crinkle. Like I said before, that means that that area is gonna be stretched a little bit because it, it crinkled, it got stretched. Perfect example of that now is if you come have a look, we've got this pretty close to straight, but you can see visually this is a high spot, you know? And the reason being that this is a high spot is it's been overstretched. It's been stretched from the dent itself and maybe a couple of hits from the hammer. So that is a prime candidate for heat shrinking, or shrinking disc, but this area will need to be shrunk back down so that it lines up with the base, with the rest of the, uh, the curve of the panel. So we're gonna stop there for now. I might give it a couple of taps because I think I can get a little bit down. Yeah, we got, we got a little bit more out of it. Okay, we'll work on this spot next. I'm just gonna stick my knee into it and see if I can get some of that, some of that back. Work that flange up a little bit. We've got a big old crinkle right here. It's in a tough spot. It's right on the flange itself, the tipped edge. It looks like it's broken a bunch of spot welds there. So I'm gonna clamp along this flange, hold them together, and then uh, I'm gonna try and get as much of that crease out. It's affected this, this crease right here. It's got a really good ding. That's gonna be our most 
problematic point and that's going to relieve a lot of the stress to allow that dent to come back out. So I'm just going to use a basic chisel just to pop that spot. Okay, a couple more clamps. Ooh, it looks like we have a, a pretty big dent right here as well. That's gonna have to pop to allow this flange to line up. Let's see what we can get that with. It's a bit of a, a bit of a rough one. Don't hit your hammers like I'm doing right now. This is a, a cheap old hammer that, that I do that with. I've got my other ones, so it's a sacrificial hammer. It's coming out quite nicely, actually. Okay, if you come around this side here, you can see this one spot is holding us up. So the same thing, I'm gonna run the edge of this dolly right in this corner here, and I'm gonna tap that high spot down so that we get our crease back. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna straighten out a few of these dents and ripples on the side here, using the same dolly and the same hammer. I think we've gone far enough with the hood upside down here. I'm gonna flip it over. You'll see what kind of a transformation, how much of a hood it looks like now than it was. It's, it's looking pretty good. So we've still got a lot of work to do, but uh, as you can see, the main part of that dent is pretty much gone. I mean, some guys would probably just start start doing some filling, but I know we can get a lot better than this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a part two to this video that's a little bit more of the finer details of getting these dents out. But for now, thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom and a little bit of the hammer and dolly techniques that we've used on the hood. And you can see that, you know, with just hand tools, you can get a lot of damage out just by noticing where you need to use the dolly, where you need to use the hammer and just work at it. Don't forget to hit subscribe, click notifications and like this video. Tell your friends we're here twice a week on a minimum. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good one.